Namaste, angels. Thank you for joining, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. What else y'all do? Whatever you do, all the many things that you do to support me, the channel, the videos, I do appreciate it. This is the Taurus full moon video. I'm sorry that I waited until today, the day of the Taurus full moon. It occurred officially at 8.34 this morning, the morning of the 12th, Tuesday, the November 12th. But I had these cards laying here since yesterday afternoon to do this reading. And you know what? I've just been not fighting the current, not fighting the universe. The other day when I was trying to get the general reading up for the week, Sunday it was, all day it was taking. My computer, I left the room for a second, came back. My computer was on some sort of, it looked like old time windows from like the 90s. And it was doing some sort of repair. I didn't blink. I didn't flinch. I let it do whatever it was going to do. And it's Mercury retrograde, so crazy things can happen. People's computers go completely on the fridge, break down. They have to replace them. I wasn't worried about mine. wasn't worried about having to replace it. I just was not going to rush, not going to be rushed. If it wanted to do some sort of repair thing, I was going to let it do what it was doing. And I did. Finally, of course, I got the general reading up. I got the love reading up. And now I'm finna get the, <laughs> um, the moon reading up, you know. Just, it is what it is. But a couple things I do want to say. I'm starting with, let me just start from the beginning. Um, forgiveness from the butterfly deck is going to be the overall energy. And, you know, this, pretty, this is pretty straightforward, right? Forgiveness. And there's, there's room for it from and toward everybody involved in our situations, including and beginning with ourselves. Also up right behind that is leaving. Some people are leaving. And I think a lot of times, or a lot of cases, leaving situations, whether they're relationships, jobs, um, circumstances, friendships, family members, living conditions, living situations, whatever it is, leaving because at one point we settled and we can't anymore. Like we cannot anymore. Like our soul, our body, is, we have to get out of this situation. It worked for a time. You know, I was out of a relationship. I was desperate for another one. So I took this person. I thought they were going to be wonderful. Sometimes in the case, even we went all the way to marriage. It is not working. My passion lies with someone else. Or, um, you know, in the case of a job, my passions, my natural creativities lie somewhere else. Not in this, you know, dead end job that I've been sitting in that I don't even like y'all. Y'all don't even like me. Why am I here? Got to get out of that living conditions, even with family members, siblings and stuff. Like we don't get along. You don't respect me. And I've just, I've, this situation has run its course. It's run its course. So definitely in relationships too. And like I said, including marriages and, and some of the marriages, particularly for the side of the masculine. And I think even more so when they are actually male, there is a real challenge in leaving some of these relationships, especially when you have children. But I know some of these men, um, you know, because I have clients, male and female, masculine and feminine. And I know some of them that they feel stuck in these relationships even when they don't have kids. I don't really get it, you know, but I, I talk them through whatever they need to talk through. I am um, also, I don't talk about it. And most of y'all probably have no idea, but I'm actually um, a licensed and ordained pastor too. I can perform any and all rites, religious rites of any kind throughout all of the continuous United States in any U.S. owned property, you know, any U.S. owned country. So I'm qualified and quantified to give people spiritual counseling and, you know, relationship counseling, all that kind of stuff. So I do. You know, if I'm being genuine, I'm being honest. When you tell me you feel stuck and you can't leave a relationship in that sense, I don't get it. But um, and that's a that's a very 3D um, standpoint and perspective. But when I'm doing my work, of course, and I am thinking, um, acting, performing as a pastor and an intuitive at that. Right. An intuitive pastor. And I'm drawing on my gifts and my abilities. I can see and feel other things. Then, you know, I can talk things through with people, but and help them to understand like I can already see that they're not stuck. But those are the kind of situations. And when we begin to unstick, to get unstuck, to leave these situations, guess what happens? Windfall, and this already started happening, especially for the earth signs. And of all three, I was gonna say mostly Taurus, but maybe, maybe that's not true. 
maybe that's not true. A lot of progress, a lot of progress for Virgo also. Um, and we saw it play out in the cards, like cards that had been up, that had been upright for them. Um, that meant one thing, like the devil in particular, the, the next time I read for them, it was in the same position, but it was upside down as if to say it's been moved. You know, we, we saw the progress in the cards for Virgo, for Taurus, for Capricorn, but of course other signs too, make, moving and shaking. They just naturally are the more likely to put some effort, some work toward whatever it is they want to do, like to finally get out of the funk. Okay, well, I got to put some effort, especially Capricorn. They're considered the workhorse of the Zodiac. But in, again, any and all signs, sun, moon, rising, this is what's going on with people. And when you begin to release those things, even if you don't see a way out and it's like, well, if I, you know, move out, my girlfriend did this recently. She had been paying mortgage um, on a home with her mother and grandmother pretty much, you know, all her adult life. But she wanted out of that house. Like, okay, well, I don't want to live with my mother and grandmother anymore. I'm a grown woman. I want to be somewhere else. So she um, made her last mortgage payment to them, worked it out with them. Can you all afford to finish paying the mortgage without me? Yes, we can. Okay, fine. Made her last mortgage payment to them, got herself uh, and her two, they were young adult daughters, but you know, they're still her daughters. She took them with her and um, moved into a three bedroom apartment. You know, it's that sort of thing. And once she did that, then other things started falling into place too. You're like, even though she didn't really see a way out, like, well, I just paid that mortgage and now I got to pay this down payment for the apartment and I got to pay my first month's rent. Like, I don't know how all this is going to fall into place, how it's all going to work or where I'm getting this money from. But guess what? It like practically fell out of the sky. She got it. And so that's what I see for other people. And again, the cards are agreeing with me, even as I talk to you and go through this, the next card up that's upright is called retirement. And it is about putting these things down. I'm, I'm retiring. I'm leaving this old job. I'm leaving this old relationship. I'm leaving this living condition. I'm leaving this toxic friendship. Um, even if it's with a family member, I'm out of here. That's what's going on with the butterflies. We'll get more into detail with it. Of course, when I do a spread. We'll tell a little story from the um, Ascendant Master deck. And this is another one of those decks that I'm often hesitant to pull out because I see cards that speak of actual literal death to me, as in a person was alive in the 3D and then breathing and they are no more. I see that with these cards. Um, not with this one. Choose peace. This is pretty good. This is about working things out amicably. Like just because you need to leave, just because, you know, uh, we need to sever some sort of situation that we have together. It doesn't mean we can't do it amicably. It doesn't mean we can't do it with some compassion, with some caring for each other and part ways in a mature manner. So that's what Choose Peace is about. Again, whatever, whether it's job, relationship, whatever it is. Because it all goes toward, for, uh, not just for me, but for you too. You know, for both people and parties involved. Health and healing. And that's what Hilarion comes to remind us of. So this is, and this is, look, it's all the green, right? It's the earth energy of the Taurus and the fellow earth signs too. Again, Capricorn, Virgo as well, especially Virgo because Mercury is very heavily involved in everything that's happening right now too. And Mercury is the ruler of the sign of Virgo. So we just had a major Mercury transit yesterday. We won't have another one like it for another 13 years. Mercury and, but, and um, Mercury, the sun had a transit and it was um, at the same time trying Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, Mercury currently retrograde in Scorpio. So this is all this earth energy that's surrounding us right now. That's so, um, you know, very prevalent, vital, important. And, and it, Gaia, the earth is dependent upon it. I, I still have to do put, post my other video, um, about all that stuff, the shifts that are going on with the planet and what she as like a being wants from us or and wants to share with us right now. Um, and speaking of that, mother. So on that note, let me just segue into mother. Mother, wife, sister, daughter, Lady Nada. When this card shows up, there is a relationship with a feminine energy in your life with whom you need to heal uh, a situation. It could be your mother, wife, sister, daughter, but it could be anybody. It could be yourself. It could be your own inner feminine, even if you are masculine, even if you are male. Um, from... My um, Egyptian Sibelia cards. We have this card, the Three of Hearts. And it's about looking, for, it's kind of like the, the Three of Wands traditionally. Um, well, hearts in the, if I was using hearts, if I was using regular cards, playing cards to read, 
hearts would identify as cups, right? Um, but this card, although the three of hearts is very three of wands like to me, including the illustration, right? With the boat off in, in the water, like your know, ships are about to come in. That's the three of wands in the tarot that looks like that. The right away tarot, there's that um, man who looks like he's, you know, pretty well off, pretty well to do, like he's maybe some sort of merchant or something. And he's waiting for his ship to come in. So that's where I'm, I'm, I guess, feeling a lot of that. And also her red, I'm feeling and seeing like the passion, but it happens to be the suit of hearts. In any case, um, it's about looking forward to uh, the future and like, you know, just very strong and confident and having high expectations of good things to come, positive um, affirmations and thoughts, you know, words about what's about to happen for you and believing in it for real. And with the thing, the thing is with this energy of three, it's all about creation and your ability to co-create along with the universe, what happens in your life, your, your own reality. And so it's like, it's not like a fixed or stuck energy, right? Dis despite the Taurian aspect that's surrounding us too, which Taurus is a fixed sign. This is not a fixed energy. This is something that we can influence. This is something that we can change and we can continue to create and bring about abundance in our own lives when this, when, when this kind of card shows up. Um, you don't want to be impulsive, however. You want to sort of like plan for the future when you see this card and use, you know, use your intuition intellect sort of high priestess like you know don't just don't just not have plans this is and i'm speaking of plans that is earth yeah. earth sign like thing you know like earth signs are very methodical and practical and so they they outline what's going to happen first so i'm feeling that energy too so i guess that's how the taurus is fitting in and maybe the three of hearts or the cups of saying you know it's a celebratory situation it's something to be happy about. It's something to be proud, proud of. It's something to look forward to because these things are going to happen as long as we remain optimistic and, and positive. Now, behind that is the seven of hearts. And we see this gentleman, this young man, he also looks um, optimistic. He looks to be like looking toward the future and that he is about to make a communication with somebody. And the, there's a lot of red in this card too. And it's a, also of the suit of hearts. So I think that the person with whom he's going to make the communication is somebody about whom he has some emotions, not necessarily romantic, but again, it could be a family member. It could be a job you've been at a long time ago. He has to write his letter of resignation before he, you know, retires, resigns, whatever it is. And that's what he's about to do. So this, um, is speaking along with these others. Now here comes Bast though. And when this energy shows up, it's the four of diamonds. Now diamonds represent pentacles in, you know, traditionally, if I was again, trying to use uh, playing cards to read tarot, for example, diamonds would represent pentacles. This card Bast is about somebody that doesn't necessarily mean you well. You know, it's not necessarily like about a friend or a positive energy. And I think it may have to do with this because again, the traditional meaning from the book in this card, um, one of the, one of the potential meetings is that you may have a clash with somebody that doesn't necessarily mean you well. And that's how I tend to, um, read this card best. And I, and it's, it's, um, I think it's called something like deception or falseness or something in the book. I don't, I don't really remember, but I, the author intended it to mean somebody is trying to be slick too. And like, you know, this is a deceiver. So th when these cards are showing up together, it's definitely telling me some of us may clash with somebody that doesn't mean us well. And that came up in one of the readings I did over the weekend too, especially for the feminine. It came up in the form of the devil. I think it was, maybe it came up for all signs too. At first I did a spread, like for everybody, a spread of four. And it may have come up there too that I was saying there may be somebody we can't trust. Yes, it did. Seven of um, swords. Seven of swords came up. Not in that spread, but right above it. And then we had two cards that I said, well, some of us may bump into somebody or may meet somebody um, 
that doesn't necessarily meet us well mean as well the knight of swords in reverse also had shown up and so this could be telling us of the same thing that some of us may have a clash with with somebody who doesn't necessarily mean as well this or some some sort of deceiver or somebody that's trying to be um slick is around you now to the the you're, you know, to the contrary, like if it's in your favor, using an energy, not of being slick, but like cunning, you know, if a situation you sure you, you feel confident about how you're reading a situation, then yes, use your cunning, your intelligence, you know, to bring about, you know, an outcome that's in your advantage, especially if it's somebody that's trying to play you. All right. You like being tested. And the next card is the three of clubs which would be the wands but it's upside down so we won't talk about that one bast then this young man and then the woman and that brings us to from the romance angels separation which is also it goes along with the other stuff i was talking about we're gonna have to separate a lot of us are separating from something so this, the card says time apart from your partners on the horizon, but it's not necessarily a partner. Uh, and if it is your partner, it's not necessarily the partner with whom you really want to be. It's the partner likely that you had previously settled for that you need to get up away from. All right. So on that note, I'm going to go to um, my laptop and the almanac. I always like to start my full moon reading um, with something from the farmer's almanac. So let's do that now. Um, Almanac is just A-L-M-A-N-A-C dot com. And this is the full moon for November 2019. The full beaver moon from the Almanac. The full beaver moon reaches peak fullness in the morning hours of Tuesday, November 12th at 8.34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Look for it the night before or just after sunset on the 12th. And then they have other information you can find out, like a, the exact time wherever you are in the world. They have a moon set calendar here. A day before the full moon, on Monday, November 11th, look out for a rare transit of Mercury across the sun. You'll need special equipment to view it, but it won't be visible from North America again until the year 2032, which again is 13 years from now. So take advantage now if you can. Of course, 13 equals 4 or 11-11. So it occurred on 11-11 and it'll take that much, that long for us to ever see it again. Why is this called the full beaver moon? November's full moon was called the beaver moon by a number of Native Americans and colonial Americans. Traditionally, some Native American groups use the monthly moons and nature's corresponding signs as a calendar to track the seasons. But why this name? This is the name of the year when beavers begin to take their shelter in their lodges, having laid up sufficient stores of food for a long winter ahead. During the time of the fur trade, it was also the season to trap beavers for their thick winter ready pelts. The November full moon was also called the full frost moon by some Native American groups. Judging by the often chilly weather that becomes more and more common at this time of year, it's not hard to understand how this name came about. They have a full moon um, beaver moon video if you'd like to watch that again on this same page. And they talk about what days are best for harvesting or setting out eggs for those of us who are lucky enough to have farms as well as what days we should be fishing. And then some moon facts. Did you know the spin time of the moon on its own axis is, is identical to the time it takes the moon to revolve around Earth, which is why the moon always keeps almost exactly the same face towards us. How much would you weigh if you were on the moon? Just multiply your weight, it doesn't matter if it's in pounds or kilograms, by 0.165 and you would weigh about 80% less if you were on the moon. Now again, what, what do I feel about the moon aside from that abundance? I just told you, clearing up stuff. I've been hearing in my head about this moon, the big payback. <laughs> You know, that song by James Brown, Get Down With My Girlfriend, That Ain't Right, stuff like that. Like people, people that have been trying to, uh, to play you, people that have not really been your friends, that have been like smiling your face when you tell them, uh, you know, but talking behind your back 
and will you tell them good things about you, um, promising things about you, things that you have to look forward for. They don't look as happy as you feel like they should look because they're not really happy. They're really haters. Just all of these people getting their karma back. Well, everybody getting their karma back. And I, I named my readings, the love reading and the um, weekly general reading that I did this weekend, something to that effect about like the big payback. Um, that people, your karma, good or bad, whatever it is, it pays off um, this week and maybe in weeks to come because my moon readings usually go for at least uh, two weeks. Actually, this um, reading goes from today, again, November 12th, um, beginning with that full moon in Taurus, which this reading is, that occurred at 834, and we'll cover also November 19th at 2.40 a.m., Mars enters Scorpio. November 20th at 2.12 p.m., Mercury goes direct, 11 degrees, Scorpio, no more um, retrograde. November 22nd at 9.59 a.m., the sun enters Sagittarius. November 25th at 7.28 p.m., Venus enters Capricorn. And then lastly, um, November 26th at 10.05 a.m., the new moon in, a, in Sagittarius occurs. So this reading will go from today, November 12th, through November 25th. All right, I think I'm going to do... Well, I always do the butterflies first, so I'll do that and I'll hold my thought and do the rest after. I was, I started to say, I think I'll do a spread with the um, Ascended Master of Cards. Oops, somebody just jumped out. Oh, look who it is. The goddess of the moon. It's Newt, Isis's mother. In this deck, she is the five of clubs. I'm just going to stick it back in here like arbitrarily, but I think that's so awesome that it just jumped out of there. Something's trying to peek from back here, too. Oh, it's Soulmate. Yes, this is your Soulmate. That card came up in the uh, readings that I did over the weekend also. A divine being or couple? Recent past. Near future. Masculine's higher self. Blocks to individual or shared progress. What the feminine can do to help herself. What the masculine can. I'm making a new placement. <laughs> What the universe um, would have each or both do to help themselves and even wants to help with, but we have to first, we have to first affirm because we have free will. So we have to let the universe know we accept its help. And this one is the outcome. Yeah. Divine being or couple. Decisions is the focus this period. Decisions. Decisions we have to wait, uh, make. Decisions perhaps that we're awaiting uh, can also be the case. Recent past. Get some rest. This has a very four of swords kind of feel. Um, like that it's more so about recovery from something. But it can, for some, literally be about sleep. In fact, the Nine of Swords, I think it was, uh, for the feminine, came up over the weekend. And I said, some of y'all might just need to get some actual sleep. Like, you're not resting easy. You're not resting well. Probably too many thoughts and you know foolishness running through your head. This, is, I feel, is about recovery first and foremost. And, and it can be especially in a decision too, maybe like a legal decision, it can be like restitution also, like recovery in that sense, like a judgment, and then you're recovering something to money or something that is owed to you. Near future. Memories. Memories. So in the near future, something will be 
in the recent past, right? It will, we, we will have moved on from it, and it's just a memory. It's what that is saying. Masculine's higher self. Parental care. So again, it's coming up. Um, a lot of the masculine. Now again, this this parental care it tends to come up over like the past few months, several months even of these moon readings, and it's been. I've felt that it's meant different things in some cases, us literally having to take care of parents, get them into um, like different types of homes, assisted living, bring them to live with us. We need to move in with them. And, and in some cases, it's about us, like we're the parents and it's about nurturing yourself. Like you've been putting aside your own emotions and feelings and things like for you feel for your kids. Um, it's not even, it's not always actually for our kids, unfortunately. And, and, you know, sometimes whole families end up getting hurt because we're trying to do what we feel is best for everybody, but it's really not. Um, and that happens a lot in the case of divorce. Like people think of divorce like a terrible thing and it's not. What's, what's, what's a terrible thing is being in a toxic relationship and showing your kids the example of what love is, you know, not supposed to look like. And that's what they learn as an example of what love is and that's unfortunate so for some of us this is about like i was talking in the beginning that especially for the masculine and even more so when the masculine is male and a father it's been difficult for him to leave some of these relationships and situations that have not been to his benefit or not are not you know for him and so that could be coming through again, too, with this parental care, that it's it's another reminder that it's time to take care of you. You prioritize yourself and you get well, then you'll be able to take care of your kids better. It's like when you're in an airplane and you need to take the oxygen mask, you can't put it on your kid first, even though you might love them more than you love yourself and you want to save them. You can't put it on them first because then something will happen to you and you won't be able to assist them over the case. So you have to give your first, give yourself oxygen first so that you're well enough to protect them. So that's what needs to happen here too. Blocks to individual or shared progress. New exercise program. This is fear um, for the most part. Fear of starting something new, fear of change. So again, that's why we've stayed at the same dead end job. That's why we've stayed in the same uh, relationship, going nowhere fast. That's why you know all these things. We've been afraid of of taking on a new exercise program. For others of us, this is actual uh, actually literal, and we got to get with the program um, into some actual physical exercise because Taurus, um, and in fact the Uranus in Taurus transit. It's a total of eight years, about seven years left, is largely about this need for exercise uh, and, and healing oneself and like and from a very 3D standpoint, um, as is the energy of Scorpio. It's very physical, physical body. Um, it's a ruler of like physical body and exercise and things. So how the feminine can help herself despite this block. Grief work and it's sitting next to the memories this is about again letting you know it might be some sadness involved in letting some of these things go it's like mixed emotions joy and you know pain there's a song like that too joy and pain it's like it's like sunshine and rain but yeah it's gonna be mixed feelings and here we go with the sirens to indicate healing and, and potential pain and lo feelings of loss and stuff too But we will. Be, this is something that will be better for it. Like soon, it the pain will leave you, and then you'll be. You know, you'll, what will remain is the memories of the good times and stuff. Masculine. What the masculine can do to help himself. Body changes is right here underneath the um, new exercise program. So, like I said, for some, um, and it's going to be very physical. It's time for you to get into shape or back into shape or, um, you know, whatever. Like actual exercise. And for others, um, you know, it's not necessarily just your physical body, right? It, doesn't, it says body changes. It doesn't say physical body changes. This can be your emotional self, right? This can be your soul body, your mental. There's changes. There's evolution. Your spiritual body, your spirit man, as they say, right? There's evolution. There's change. There's growth. And so... What was once, you know, maybe just a little tiny little caterpillar 
has now, you know, has, has taken the time to seclude himself for growth, expansion, and then emerge this beautiful butterfly. That's what's ahead for some of you um, masculine or whether that's what you can take on in order to help yourself in this time. And that too is very Scorpio, right? Transformation, transition, or even death, right? The death of the old self and then this the emergence of a brand new self. What the universe would have each or both of us do and even wants to do with us, wants to help us with, but we have to first affirm, is join in. So coming together, you see there's two butterflies in this picture coming together and moving forward voluntarily. Like the universe doesn't want to have to drag us kicking and screaming. It wants to encourage us to voluntarily join in and move forward. Like to shake off the fear and stuff and the outcome. Motivation. So I think this is what I think this is what we'll be left with actually. I think this is a genuine, like a true outcome. This is what's gonna be the results of all of this stuff, and then that's gonna help us to move forward. But it begins, like we started with the forgiveness. So this is where it all starts. This is where it all begins. All right. I'm going to do one from the masculine perspective, but not with the romance angels. I, I feel to do it with the um, Ascended Master cards. So maybe more than romantic, it'll more so be about the healing that's necessary between masculine and feminine to get to a particular point. And maybe if I need or we or want, we want some clarification, maybe then I'll add the romance cards. Let's start with these. So divine feminine, so like a message from our, the feminine higher self to her. The masculine as it relates to the feminine himself and the union connection as a whole. Overall, what the masculine would have the feminine do, surrender, whatever you want to call it. You know, like what energy he wants her to feed to the union during this period or the connection. This is even for single people. Like even if you don't know who this person is, this is we're talking higher self. All right, we're talking spirit body again. Um, so this is for singles. This is for people who are coupled. These are people who are aware of their partner, or at least they believe they're aware of their partner, but they're in separation, like all of it. So what the masculine himself is willing to give to the connection and what the universe would have each or both of us to do and even wants to help us with, but we have to first affirm since we have free will and the outcome. Again, the overall energy was choose peace. Divine Feminine. Wow. Peace offering. White buffalo calf woman. Okay, so in the beginning, I started to talk about cards that speak of actual literal 3D death for me. And I never finished the thought. I never finished the sentence. This is one of them, and I had seen it when I was shuffling. And I, I started to say that that's a reason why I think I don't pull these cards out as often too, just like my Isis ones. Um, sort of like a fear that was, I guess, was in me, uh, within me, that I didn't want to see this card, or I didn't want to see proper burial for freedom, because uh, I know what it means. But here it is. So, particularly the feminine, and we just had that card grief work. Those for the feminine too, particularly the feminine. We may experience some genuine grief in our life. Um, some of us may be dealing with it already, I feel. Maybe we, we, we already had a recent loss, a friend, family member. We lost them recently. For some, some of us lost somebody recently. Uh, for others, it could be like a friend of the family or something. Um, I'm getting even a pet. I'm feeling a pet too. So it's a family member, but it's not like a person. Um, maybe over the next two weeks. So all I got to do is, is, I mean, all I can do is give, you know, 
express my uh, sadness and condolences in advance. Um, I do apologize because I'm, you know, I was gonna say unfortunately, I don't want to reject my gifts, but it's kind of like unfortunately in terms of loss. But at the same time, it's fortunate. It's a blessing. So I don't, again, I don't, you know, anything that God gave me, I don't want to reject it. Um, but it kind of puts a damper on things. <laughs> so I have to like try to shift my energy back to the, you know, the upbeat and positive that it was. But yeah, um, for others, again, just dealing with a 3D situation, choose uh, peace offering and choose peace, you know, sort of go hand in hand, right? So this could be the feminine making a peace offering or being in receipt of one and then being open to again not not rejecting that but being compassionate about the other person wanting to work something out with you even if it's working out a parting of ways the masculine as it relates to the feminine the power of joy remember i was just talking about joy and pain so and these cards are like the same colors too The border and everything. It's the same colors. Um, so for some, yeah, this is not about death, 3D, 3D death and loss and stuff, but about joy and pain that we've experienced to get like, you know, we, we've had sadness, we've had pain, and maybe it was the masculine that even inflicted the pain upon the feminine. But now, again, an opportunity to choose peace and to sort of try to work these things out, even if that doesn't mean getting back together or getting together for the first time or at all. Um, and just means, you know, amicably shaking hands and, and resolving a situation. That's what's going to happen. So it brings up feelings of both joy and pain, sadness and happiness. It's resolution though. The masculine as it relates to himself. Balance. So maybe this is why this is coming up. Because I've also been talking a lot about balance. If you look at the other readings that I did this weekend and the scales being evened. And so maybe that's why joy, both joy and pain are necessary to coexist right now. But the masculine trying to find time for everything that's important in his life. So time for himself. Again, that nurturing that he has to do for himself. But also, you know, there's a time for work, there's a time for play, there's a time for everything. We just got to find, you know, everything in its place. We got to find opportunities to do all this stuff and maybe even schedule it like an earth sign would. You know, I got to plan stuff out if we got to do that. We got to plan date night and everything, maybe. Um, the goddess Isis guides the masculine to do this. The masculine as it relates to the union or a connection as a whole. Follow your heart, says St. Francis. You guys know St. Francis is one of my favorites. Um, he's the one on which my feelings about release your ex from the romance angels um, are based. You know, because that's what he did. He lived and died like by his own choosing he followed his heart always and so he guides us to do that in terms of the union and like i was saying a lot of people are in these relationships that they settled they're not happy they or they you know they picked the one that looked right on paper or that you know their family wanted them to be with or whatever the case is and the soul is not having it anymore the soul is saying get out like the movie get out and you know that's the guidance we're receiving through the cards too and through St. Francis in particular um, right now. Follow your heart. Even if like the new job pays less, you know, you're dying to be an artist. Um, and a lot of artists are starving, you know, but right now you work, you know, corporate job. Follow your heart. Let the corporate job go and be an artist. That's what the cards are saying. What the, uh, overall, let's do overall. Let it go. <laughs> I'm glad I was moved to do that one first. Let it go. Yes, we're just letting these things go. It doesn't even matter anymore. You know, um, what matters is that we're like pursuing our dreams. We're stepping into the age of Aquarius. That's why they were all being moved to sort of get into this 
a uh, Aquarius type of mindset. It's all about freedom and humanitarianism. So we're wanting to do spiritually based things and jobs and, you know, have relationships, have deeper spiritual connections. And we're wanting to do as we choose and be, you know, fluid, whatever that means. And whether some people sexually, just some people in general, but that's where we're wanting to be, like go with the flow. So in order to do that, we've got to let it go. Whatever it was that was holding us back. And that's guidance from Quan Yin. What the masculine would have the feminine do contribute surrender toward the union this week. It is, listen, I talked at length about the need for effective communication. I said, I'm just getting a feeling. I remember, I don't remember what card it was, but it wasn't a card about listening per se. But that was what I kept getting from it. That there was a need to have real conversations and to listen. Not just like hear what the person was saying, like words talking at you. Um but to listen. And, uh, yes, man, Drishi agrees. That's the guidance for the feminine. Uh, that's what the masculine would like the feminine to do, to listen. And that kind of means in some, at least in some cases, like don't talk, like, you know, like you talk over him a lot of the time. And so that's how you miss what he's trying to say too. Like, just listen. Of course, when I say her and him here, I mean masculine and feminine archetypes, not necessarily um, male and female. Uh, what the masculine would have, the f um, what he himself is willing to give to the union this week, is come out of the closet, says Amaterasu. So this very much goes um, with these things that I was these things I was talking about, like these relationships, for example, where you're in them because that's the one that looked good on paper. That's the one your family wanted you with. That's the one that had made more money. Well, that's a straight relationship, you know, and so you got to pretend to be straight, whatever the case is, but it's like going against your soul. So whatever it is your soul wants, Amaterasu is saying, come out of the closet this week, masculine. Stop being phony. Stop playing house, you know, with some, with your, some, your baby mama, as they say, um, if you don't really care about her in that way, you don't have really have a genuine romantic interest in her. Let's choose peace and, and amicably separate. Yes, that might be sad. It might be painful, but ultimately that leads to joy for both people and for your future, you know, or additional partners as well. Um, what the universe would have each or both of us do and even wants to help us with, but we have to first affirm. <laughs> Open your heart to love, says Jesus. And it's right here above the follow your heart. I don't think I need to add romance cards to this. I think we already get the, we're already getting the guidance of love and romance right here. And um, the outcome. See the other person's point of view. That's going to one come, come through listening in part, but this is also like what I was saying. It's about the other person. Like if we're with somebody, for example, we're in a relationship with somebody that we don't really want to be with. And especially those, those people, if we're with one of those people that some people just want to keep you there just for the sake of keeping you there. They don't want to be in the relationship with you either, you know, and they probably have other people that they're dealing with, but they don't want to let you go. It's important in those kind of situations, we're seeing the other person's point of view and we're realizing how, again, we can each be happy once we're all where we belong. But as long as nobody's where they belong, nobody's completely happy. Even if you are seeing or dealing with somebody else, you're not going to be completely happy because you're not really able to be present there, you know? And so it's that sort of, and it applies to the other situations too, to again, the, the living situations with family, um, to a job, do all of those things. You're taking up a space that you don't belong in, right? That your soul doesn't belong in. Your soul would be happy in another space and somebody else's soul would be happy in that space. And so that's the other point of view. And that note, I think I'll just do the advice because again, I think these cards already spoke of love. And I have another reading that I want to do for you. Oh, it's not necessarily a reading, but another video I want to do for you guys. Just a reminder what the overall energy here was. It is forgiveness from the butterfly deck. 
from the romance angels it is separation and um i'll do one card each from the sibilia deck and i'll put this one to be done last so i'll actually read from the book for this for that one so from the butterfly deck to the masculine further advice motivation let me give you another because we saw motivation already did i shift this a little bit Oh, I put them in the wrong place. I usually put them here. I put them in the back. Okay, so we saw both of those. So here is your card. Nope, that's not your card. All of these are the ones I saw. Parental care, grief work. Nope, nope, nope. Now I'm going to have to peek. Okay. This is your genuine card, masculine. It is courage. Courage. So uh, very Leo energy too. Maybe um, perhaps a Leo or other direct fire sign even particularly impacted by the energies that I've discussed here. Courage. The courage is also needed in general, whether there's a Leo or a fire sign involved or not, in following your heart, in coming out of the closet, in opening your heart to love. All of those require courage. So that's why it's being given to us. Also in moving forward where there's been loss, courage necessary. Um, for the oh, we're going to have the same problem with the feminine, I guess, right? Because I put the cards in the wrong place. Let's see. Yeah, this is body changes. All right. So her genuine card is seeking and finding. A lot of times this is about you and only you, right? Losing, at least metaphorically, where I had to lose myself to find myself. In other cases, this is, again, very literal, and we're wanting to find, like, family members, friends we haven't seen in a long time, but family members we haven't met. I never knew my father. I never knew my mother, siblings, or whatever it is, and we're trying to meet these people, too. So a lot of the feminine may be working on that over the next two weeks, one way or another. You know, seeking and finding something. Could be seeking and finding, like, very literal, a new job. You know what I'm saying? A new man, a new woman, whatever it is. Also, it doesn't have to necessarily be so deep, but I did feel what I described for some people. From the romance angels to the masculine, romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. That's why you got to follow your heart. And for the feminine. This is the card I was talking about with St. Francis. Isn't that hilarious? Release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. For some, it is very straightforward. It is release your ex. And, and you know what? In some cases, that's who's gone. And that's why you haven't been able to really move on. Some of us have like a deceased ex. And we've been trapped in some kind of energy in that regard too. Maybe they're our, our child's parent or something like that. That has to be let go. Not the memory of the person. So remember, we get to keep the memories from that first spread. But we have to let go of the energetic cords, the uh, ethereal cords that are still connecting us. And, you know, if we need help with those, there are different methodologies to cutting those. Um, release your ex. Also, for some, this is expression. This is a need to speak up and a need to listen. And it's part of communication, the effective communication that has to happen. And um, lastly, as I started to say, um, for me, it's about living and or loving and or dying, like on your own terms, in your own way. And what I mean by that and why, why I reference St. Francis in that regard is because St. Francis was a martyr. He was to be crucified. He knew he was going to be crucified. And he said, you know what? I don't deserve to be put on the cross. I'm not Jesus. Isn't that funny how Jesus is right here at top St. Francis? I'm not Jesus. Don't put me on a cross. Put me on an X. You're going to kill me? I'm willing to die for my beliefs. I'm willing to, you know, die for what I live for. Put me on an X. So he, even in death, he decided how he was going to live and what was going to go down in his life, what he was going to give his life to, what he was going to give his energy to, how he was going to direct it. It didn't matter what society felt. In fact, society was against him. That's why he was a martyr. And that same is going to go for us in like a smaller scale. 
It's about coming out of the closet. Release your ex. The time has come for you to clear your energy. And for those of us, again, for whom that is literal, um, I actually do energy healing too. I know I probably sound like, oh, I got 10 jobs. No, <laughs> but I actually perform energy healing too. I don't talk about that much either, but I have a page. Um, it's on my website also. You can go to queen of swords, the lightworker.com and you'll get, begin to get an idea of what kind of energy healing I perform. From the Sibelia cards to the masculine, the Egyptian Sibelia cards, this too is a card that speaks of loss. The Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades. And there's a big scorpion here. Which Scorpio, well, death in the tarot represents the sign of Scorpio also. Um, you know, as always, I pray that for as many people as possible, it's just a metaphoric um, death and... You know, the old me is dead and gone and moving on to the new. Like we saw with your card, body changes masculine. So I'll read this card to you, what the meaning is from the book. Also going to point out that it's a card number 40. So that's another, you know, 1111 there. 13, 4, 1111. Master number 22. And for the feminine. Ugh. So we don't, <laughs> this guy doesn't want to hear what has to be said he doesn't want to listen isn't that funny uh the eight of spades so it sounds like there's some bad news coming this uh, gentleman's way he does not want to hear it and this one is card number 47 or 11. all right i will read this from the book Ace of Spades, sorrow, a woman crying. So it's just like what I was seeing before. I said a feminine suffering some sort of loss or pain. That's how it's showing up in the cards too. But this is on the masculine's, this is the masculine's card. So again, it may be pain that he inflicted, that he caused. Or something affecting a female in his life. Possible violence or abuse of power by strangers or those who do not love us. Do not talk about this before I laid any cards down. I talked about these fake people that need to give, you know, their, their payback. And I was hearing the James Brown song. There's a sound where he talks about the friend, the former friend. Um, a line, rather. We talked about the former friend. It's like, now it's time for you, punk, to get ready for the big payback. Yeah. So it may be, again, somebody that you thought cared about you, wronged you, um, didn't really love you, and you're finding that out, okay? And I've, again, I'm, I'm sorry for all of these things, but, you know, this is what I've been seeing. I, I can't, I don't know, let me just go on. Let me just read it. Um, so, yeah, basically being wronged by people who don't love us. It's important to emphasize that the situation is not hopeless, but only painful. Yes, there will be a turning point, exactly, the big payback. Or we will figure out how to make everything better by alleviating our own sorrow, right? We talked about that too. Like in some cases, we're gonna have to take some sort of action, do something. That's the Taurus energy I've been feeling. The further advice is, um, they ask, do you remember the time you helped someone who was suffering? The time has come to remember what you said and did for others. And then apply it to yourself in your own life. And that kind of also brings in what I was talking about with the children. Like we were living for other people and not nurturing ourselves. You, you're guided to do that now, masculine. So they want you to remember what you've told other people and take your own advice. The point of view of others is important. <laughs> Seeing another's point of view. Um, but our own inherent wisdom will surely be a strong help to us. That is for you, masculine. These cards really couldn't resonate better. Wait till you hear what this one is called. Eight of Spades. Jealousy. A desperate person. I told you, people that they pretend they like you and they smile on your face, they're talking behind your back, or they're not, they don't look as happy as they should be if they're really your friend or somebody that cares about you. When you tell them good news about you, they are jealous. 
Everything that I was feeling showing up here in the cards. Negative feelings toward yourself and others. The condition of jealousy is that of one who does not know how to love. And many ills can be remedied by understanding this. Abandon immediately any pride, anger, and destructive passivity to embrace a calm that will bring counsel. Right. Embrace a calm. This is the compassion that I was saying we needed to draw upon instead of any, you know, and be amicable. We can fix things without being angry, without being ugly. Don't ever believe that you are in a never ending slump. There is always someone who supports you selflessly. Speak with someone who is truly jealous. This is the, advi the separate advice they give. Ask them about their possessiveness as if you were carrying out a sort of polite and discreet survey. Listen well to the answers and you will understand, this is seeing other person's point of view, you will understand if you are really like them and have a big problem to resolve that you previously thought you did not have or not. You know, you'll find out. And that's the advice from that one. I hope you guys have enjoyed this reading. I found it pretty intense myself, but I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I wish you could give it one for each one that you feel, but they only let you give one. Um, and I do appreciate it. Thanks again for joining, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, passing it around, teaching other people, you know, saying, listen, I heard this wacky lady <laughs> going through all kinds of emotions. Um, you know, from happiness to sadness in one reading. Yeah, pass the information around. I appreciate it. If you would like a private reading from me or any of the merchandise I have available, energy healing, all that information will be in the description box as will be my social media. So you can, you know, be my friend. Look forward to talking to you guys again soon. I will be back with another video, uh, one that explains all the what I saw and felt about all the transits, uh, some of which that have come and others that are still to come this year. Namaste.